What's up, everybody? It's April Dawn. I'm back to do my Queen Sugar review. This is Queen Sugar, Queen Sugar Season 1, Episode 5, I think, as promised. So it starts off with, well, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to break it down into stories today because it was a little bit easier to follow today because they pretty much, you know, everybody had their own thing going on. So we start off with Nova. Nova is on a radio show in the morning. She um, She's trying to talk about Black Lives Matter or, you know, the article that she has written for the paper and they have an activist from Black Lives Matter there. Her name is Chantal. The conversation immediately steers to Davis and Charlie's marriage and Goldie and how fine Goldie is and was she a thot or was she a best, you know, was she a groupie and yada, yada, yada. And Nova tries to steer the conversation back to um, the article that she written in Too Sweet and His Situation, but they keep bringing it back to that subject. So basically, it seems like she gets kind of frustrated and she she makes she goes on a mini rant about victim blaming. You know, um, sort of making it seem like Charlie or Charlie's accuser Goldie is a victim. Now, whether you think she is or isn't, you know, is besides the point. Obviously, Charlie gets upset. Um, and I think, you know, she has valid reasons. Both of them have valid points. Because Nova, uh, you can make the girl look like a a victim or whatever you when you're speaking about your sister's situation it makes it seem as if you're speaking for your family or you're speaking for your sister even if you're not so it just looks bad so i can see why charlie is upset because we don't know the whole story but at the same time charlie was being extra sensitive because she never said that particular girl was a victim she was just speaking about victims in a general sense of the word so you know, they both had um, points about why they were mad at each other. So after the interview was over with, her, um, her and Chantel go in the hallway. She admires Chantel's necklace, honey, and they getting their flirt on. And she's like, you know, I'm going to let you have the necklace, girl. Yes, girl. <laughs> let me put my number in your phone. Is that okay, girl? You know, and you're going to call me, right? <laughs> you said you were going to call me. <laughs> Okay, girl. So, yeah, Nova about to get her a boo thing, honey, because they was all up in each other's neck and, you know, put necklaces on. And I don't put my number in nobody's phone, okay? Like, I don't even remember the last time I put my number in somebody's phone. Who does that? So, her and Nova going to be getting together real soon. I guess she ain't worried about Kevin no more, honey. She got her a new piece. I can't remember the girl's name. She was on a TV show, like, back in the day, right, y'all? I can't remember her name. If you remember her name, put her name in the comments because she, she's on a lot of little stuff. Um, later on in the episode, Nova is talking to Too Sweet. Too Sweet is, it was so sad, y'all. Too Sweet is um, out of the hospital. He's going to be back in his cell pretty soon. He's saying, telling her he's not going to make it. Um, I'm assuming he means he's not going to make it. Like He might end up taking a plea because he can't take being in an adult prison and he's a teenager. Um... She, he asked about the public defender. Y'all, public defender system is really messed up. If you don't know anything about it, it's sometimes the people don't even, sometimes they're tax lawyers. They don't even know. People just sign up to be on a public defender, defender list, and you can get picked up that day, and you have to go defend somebody. So they don't know nothing about the case, nothing about what's going on with the situation, but they have to defend these people. So oftentimes they don't get a good defense. So he don't have, he don't even have a public defender, though. No. It's a waiting list for the public defender. She said there is no money to bail him out and they can't get the bond lowered or the bail lowered until they have a lawyer. That's how you get messed over right there. So he's going through it. She feels really bad for him and she really doesn't have any solutions to help him, you know, other than, you know, stay focused, stay strong and keep pushing on. You can tell that she's really upset about his situation. So um, at the end of her arc comes at the episode where she basically takes money from the farm account, $10,000, to post bail for Too Sweet without telling anyone. So she's stealing from her family. I know, you know, it's her family and I know it's bail, so you get maybe get bail back, I think. I don't know how bail, I thought it's bond. I don't know how it works because I don't really go to jail. So, um, you know, I don't know how that whole system works, but she used their family money without telling them. So, you know, it's going to come back to bite her in the butt later on. Because um, my thing is, how are you going to repay that? I don't know. So, I guess we'll find out. So, um, <clears throat> okay, Ralph Angel. 
Ralph Angel is trying, y'all. He's trying, but he keeps on making those bad decisions. So basically now he doesn't got roped into this whole um, scam of stealing goods from the warehouse where he works at by the guy. His name is Melvin. I hate Melvin, okay? Melvin needs to disappear. I'm from Louisiana, and they couldn't have found nobody, baby. I'm from Slotty, Louisiana, and up the street is Lacombe, Louisiana, and everybody in Lacombe look like Melvin. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> he's the perfect character, like, for that area. I mean, perfect. Perfect. They couldn't have picked nobody better. So, Melvin has gotten Ralph Angel tied up in this doggone scam where they're stealing stuff and making money. Now, Ralph Angel's starting to make some money because he has some coins in his pocket, honey. And he's telling him, um, Melvin that he don't want, you know, he doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. He wants to stop. Melvin tells him, boy, you not going to stop you. As soon as you walk out the door with that product, you know what I'm saying? It was over for you, dude. Um, yeah, you in the scam. Like, basically, I'm going to tell on you if you don't keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing. So, um, and earlier in the episode, he gave Vi Auntie Violet some money on the way to church, told him to go to brunch. I, and, you know, he got a phone. I mean, he needs a phone. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying go do no crimes, but I'm just saying, like, you know, the brother needs to join the 21st century. And, you know, he wants to give Aunt Violet some money because Aunt Violet be doing everything for him and his son. So, I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> You know, you didn't want to get back on top. I'm just saying, you know, let it go. So, Auntie Violet knows something is up because she know her nephew ain't got all this money. Like, boy, where you get all this money from? Oh, he says, I'm a working man now, so I can afford it. You know, go out. I just want to thank you. Enjoy yourself. So, and she like, nah, something ain't popping. Later on in the episode, um, we find out that he's been keeping these stolen goods in a shed in the back, and he's put a padlock on it. And Auntie Vi standing on that back door, okay? Like my grandmother looking at the, what you doing out there? That, that, that shed ain't never had no lock on it. Oh, okay, well, you know, we got to be safe since we got all this new farm equipment, yada, yada, yada. She knows something is up. So, a little bit further on in the episode, Ralph Angel decides from, um, cause Melvin is telling him, I'm going to come store some more things out in your shed. I'm not asking you. And he's telling him, dude, I do not want to do this anymore. Sorry, y'all. <sighs> Allergies. Um, I do not want to do this anymore. And he kind of like fights the dude or whatever. And he, they get in a fight and a tussle. Child, they went to the commercial break and came back from the commercial break and they were still fighting. So <laughs> they beat him up. <laughs> and it was funny when the man walked in the room, everybody was like, it's like, go. You hear me? <laughs> it was hilarious because they turned around and walked away like nothing, like nothing. It was hilarious. Anyway, um, him and the boss get into it. He's basically asking his boss, telling his boss to lay him off. I'm fine with that. I want you to lay me off so he can get unemployment or whatever. And the boss tells him, you know, you need to get out of here. Um... And, and then Ralph Angel finally get a little bit of sense and threatens the boss, basically saying, um, hey, uh, if you don't let me off, I'm going to go ahead and let my probation officer know that my check is eight hours short every time you give it to me. Oh, huh, huh. man, ain't know what to do, man. So he laid him off. Great. But guess what? That night at the house, the probation officer, the police show up because, you know, they can come and search your house at any time. Because they, that's what they do. So they came to his house. They searched. And he looking all guilty standing with his back to the shed. I'm like, boy, I, I just had a feeling that the stuff wasn't going to be there. Because I felt like Auntie Violet was going to look out for him. And that's exactly what she did. When they got in there, they didn't find anything. Auntie Violet said, um, it's gone. It's in the bayou. Forget about it. It's over with. Um, and she gives him a hug. He cries. I like the fact that Ralph Angel still cries. But... Like, I need for him to get it together because, like, he cute and everything. But, like, I can't help Ralph Angel get his credit together if he's still making bad life decisions. Okay? I can't do that. You know, me and Ralph Angel, we can't get together. We can't be booze. And I can't help you rebuild your life if you're still out here making poor decisions. Sometimes you just got to be broke. Sometimes you got to get a, a, a phone from the corner store for six months and make it work. You know what I mean? You out here boosting stuff. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. Boy, stop. Okay, you just got out of jail. Stop it now. So, you know, he cried like a little baby. Told her he was sorry. And that was pretty much his story for the episode. Um... Charlie and Davis go to Houston. Um, they want to pay off Melina. Let me just.
Davis can go straight to hell. Okay? I was through, honey. Do you understand me? Ah! I was through. I was through. When I saw it, I was just like, oh my God. Girl, let me, I'm, I'm talking about Nessa, girl. Look, I was pulled up on this couch. I was like, what is the tea? Anyway, so they go to Houston to pay off the girl. Um, they work everything out with the lawyers. Turned out my theory was wrong. It's not no police setup or nothing. They're really going to pay her off. They're really going to, you know, um, go through with it. They signed the paperwork for the $3 million. She basically, the lawyer says she's not going to sign her paperwork until you um, go in there and apologize. So he tries to prep Charlie. Davis tries to prep Charlie and tell her, you know, I don't know what she's going to say, but I didn't rape anybody. Yada, yada, yada. So they get in there. They sit down with the girl. The girl starts reading her statement. Child. The statement, child. So the statement is that basically her and Davis have been messing around for three over three years. <clears throat> Excuse me. They um I guess she was like his girl, the prostitute that he always calls. And so that night they she was drunk and they went in the hotel room together and she and he left her. So he left her because Micah had an asthma attack and he had to go back home. So he left her and he told the other guys that they could have a go with her because he had already paid her. So she said, when I came out of the shower with two guys that were waiting for me and I guess they raped her and then some more guys from the team joined in and they all raped her or whatever. So he did not lie when he said he didn't rape her. He did not rape her, but he basically left her to the wolves and set her up for rape and then she plays this recording on a tape and um like a voicemail and the voicemail is basically a whole other person like i had been in that relationship where you thought your man was x y and z and you find out some stuff like i don't even who are you i don't even know you sir i i can't so the tape was like, I'm, I'm, I, I call you to do what uh, my wife won't do. And, you know, uh, I pay you to keep your mouth shut. You got paid, didn't you? So stop coming after me and my family and X, Y, and I mean, it was worse than what I can not remember. Y'all, it was horrible. Like, he, I, Charlie's face shattered into a thousand pieces. She stood up. What I liked about it is she stood up and leaned over and said, I am sorry. I am sorry. I am truly sorry. Because she had been calling this girl a hoe. And, you know, I was kind of like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Just because she a prostitute. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, you they get raped too. You can't just say because she a prostitute, she couldn't get raped or whatever. Like, I applaud her for, for from, you know, correcting her wrong. Okay, because even that very episode, she said she wasn't a victim and yada, yada, yada. And you can tell when she heard that she saw the error of her ways and she immediately apologized to her. She immediately apologized. And I appreciated that. As a woman, I appreciated that, that, that she stood up and did that before she walked out the room. She was totally devastated. You can tell she had this picture of her husband like she told him before they walked into the room, I wouldn't be standing next to you if I thought you were a rapist. She held his hand like she was in solidarity with him. When she walked out of that room, baby, it's over. It's done. Finish. Cancel Christmas. Cancel Thanksgiving. It's done. Finish. Well done. Ribeye. It's over. Okay? Like, she got on the elevator. She told him it was over between them and his whole face cracked into a million pieces and I was here for it okay because I still don't even think he feels the weight of what is really happening right now until he loses everything so I don't know if they actually gave her the money or if this is gonna come up later I have no idea but that's what happened with that storyline uh, um, another very important part is that uh, the sisters and brothers they all got together this was a, a wonderful scene because at the beginning of the scene, you know, Nova comes in with the bottle of wine, knowing that she's wrong, knowing that she's probably going to hear something from her sister. <clears throat> and she goes into the kitchen. They begin to argue about what happened on the radio. I like the fact that they were arguing, but they didn't put us in the middle of the argument. They kind of like let the argument happen. The men were in the living room, just as men do, you know, when women go back and forth and, you know, they're like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, you know how the kids in school, yada, yada, trying to ignore the fact that they're arguing. Prosper is coming over for dinner. My boy, Prosper. 
he coming for dinner because um, they want to get him to be the farm manager. So they're trying to prep Charlie on how to act and what to say when he gets there so that she won't mess it up. Because we all know Prosper ain't got time for it. He is not here for the BS, okay? He came to work and handle business. If you ain't got time to handle business, he going back to the fishing line, okay? So Prosper comes over. Um, they eat a wonderful dinner. And um, then he dropped some pearls on. I was like, come on, and drop pearls. Yes, God. Prosper. I fool with Prosper the long way. You know what I'm saying? Uh -uh. Prosper. Yes. He was just like, you know, if y'all, it's going to be a lot of hard work. Um, you know, y'all need to work. If you plan to work together, if you work together like your father wanted you to work together, it can be successful. Um, it's going to, you know, basically it's going to take time. It's going to take dedication. You're going to have to, you know, work together to get it done. But I will be your farm manager. I say, yes, God. I love all, I love all people. I do, y'all, because they know so much. Like, they can come in and say one line and make your whole life change. You'll be like, wow. My grandmother told me, don't ever mess with no man who can't give you no little piece of money. She told me that a long time ago, like when I was a kid. And now that I'm older, it makes sense. She not saying be no gold digger, but your man should be able to provide for you to a certain extent, right? At least she should be able to provide for himself. If he's able to provide for himself, then he should be able to help you out. I mean, you know, you need to looking for a help me. You know, she not telling me not to do nothing, but you know, she dropped that with. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the story. So they go out to the field and um, they start, you know, he got the workers. Probably he got, and all of them got there, even Charlie. She's out there. I didn't expect to see her out there, but she was out there. And um, they work the field because um, it has to be done by hand. It's not something that can be done by a machine. And it's still that way to this day. So that's pretty cool. Um, they were all out there. They worked up a day's worth of work. Um, Charlie and Remy walked back. Oh, I forgot to talk about the part where Remy offers Charlie um, the, his his seed cane, um, this special seed cane that he's created for free because he wants somebody to take a chance on him because they can't find um, seed cane anywhere in the state, basically. So um, she agrees to it. And uh, so they work the field, they they do everything they need to do, and she has to meet up with Davis that afternoon, so she has to leave. Child, when Davis gets to the house, I, I live for Auntie Violet, okay? I live, I live, because she won't even let him in the house. Like, she was just like, he was like, okay, well, I'm gonna come inside. You know, she's like, look, um, they're gonna be outside from, they're gonna be back from the field in a minute. And he was like, okay, well, let me just, no, they're gonna be back from the field in a minute, meaning you stand right here because you ain't coming up in my house, okay? They'll be back in a minute, shortly. And so, him and Mike are standing out there. I think Michael goes inside because he lives there now. So um, Nova and Davis are standing outside, and Davis tries to compare himself to Too Sweet Honey, and it's just not, it's not going to fly. Nova reads him from left to right now. One thing about Nova I have discovered over these episodes is that she's really, like, all over the place. Like, I thought she had it together. You know, she was centered. She was, you know, ting, 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 you know, uh, meditating and burning incense and, you know, whatever. Like, she all over the place. Nova got all kinds of stuff going on. You messing around with married folks. You got girlfriends you finna have. You stealing money. Like, you doing a lot. Like, Nova's doing a lot. So, but one thing she do have it together on is read. Okay, is reading. And she read him for filth and told him about his wealth privilege. Yeah, they are black. They're both black, but you don't compare yourself to him because you have enough money to get lawyers. You have enough money to, you have a private car. You stay in an expensive hotel. You're doing all stuff. You flew down here on a private jet. This boy don't even have a public defender. So don't even compare yourself to him because other than y'all being black, you don't have nothing else in common. And so she got him together real quick and I was here for the read, okay? So Davis is just grasping at straws at this point. So he ain't just to be back no more. <laughs> just send him away. We tired of him. I'm so tired of him. I'm tired. Sorry. Um, I think um, that was pretty much it that happened on the episode. I hope I didn't forget anything, y'all. Um, if you have thoughts, comments, if I missed something, uh, go ahead and put that in the comment section. I appreciate everybody for watching the videos and all the comments I get. I try to respond to everything, y'all. If I mess up a word or somebody's name or whatever, forgive me. I'm trying to make the videos 
under 20 minutes so i don't know if this one gonna make it but i'm trying to make them pretty short so i sometimes i rush through and i might forget some things or whatever so i just really appreciate you guys watching and supporting me like i said i'm not a big youtube channel at all um i'm just really doing this for fun because i really enjoy the show so don't forget to like comment subscribe next week's episode look like it's gonna be really good with hollywood's wife coming back into the fold look like nova gonna be getting that necklace back um um, I don't know, Remy and Charlie, I think their relationship is going to develop, but I kind of can't root for them because how can I say it's wrong for Davis to sleep outside his marriage and then it's, wrong for, it's not wrong for her, even though he cheated on her, but they still married though. So like, you know, I kind of feel like it's cute or whatever, but like they need to file for divorce before they start going on dates and all of that, I guess, you know. So just let me know what you guys think about it. Y'all have a great week. Bye.